Is vintage a happy industry? Is the second-hand selling community a happy one? So I guess where to start with defining that is just to look at like happiness in general in industries. I mean, how does somebody define what happiness is? It's probably a sense of purpose, a sense of fulfillment, um, a sense that you're doing something good, being genuinely content with who you are being in that situation, I guess. It's quite hard to, and it's quite vague to describe that, but when I think about vintage as an industry, and whether it's a happy industry, it's had quite a lot of different levels to it. Now, because of the nature, so I'm gonna kind of break this one down into the nature of the nature of vintage in terms of the happiness between sellers, the happiness nature in terms of profitability and work rate, and then I guess the happiness as an overall thing and see where I get. So because vintage clothing deals with stuff, clo like items that have got a limited supply, you could say that the element of competition has always been quite a prevalent theme within it. If you see somebody who's got items that you want and they're selling it for cheaper than you can afford, you have quite a bit of comparison with competition. Now, is that healthy? Yeah, I think that competition is healthy. I think that's the reason why it's a saying is that competition is healthy and it's good to, be, it's good to have a driving force, but I guess where the happiness factor of that comes into it is you end up spending, if you're a genuine vintage seller, you spend a lot of time chasing a product, chasing a brand, chasing, I guess, an ideology of what you've got up in your head of what you want to sell. Like, not to go off grid, but if you think about a brand like Stussy, for example, why do you want to sell Stussy? What is it about the brand? Have you got a past with Stussy or like the sort of ideologies and themes around the brand? Or do you just think it looks cool because other people wear it? It's not to say that that's something that's like a wrong idea to have, but you've got to kind of like look at why you want to sell the brands. So when I kind of take that point and put it into what I'm talking about now with competition between suppliers, you've got a lot of people in an industry trying to sell similar brands. And a lot of people within it might just be selling brands or might be selling certain styles because that's what other people do, because they've seen it be successful, because they have seen it sell for a lot of money, or it could be a multitude of reasons. But when we kind of look at the happiness factor of it, for me, I never chased selling Carhartt because that wouldn't have gave me happiness in keeping a brand on a pedestal that I didn't, in my eyes, think needed that much of a pedestal. You look at North Face, you look at Carhartt, these brands have been standalone for years, but now due to the internet and the hype around them, they have all this big like push and boost around them. That almost feels a bit like unnecessary. Um, that's not the point though, I know. But when I look at if I was to sell Carhartt, it wouldn't get, give me happiness selling a brand that in my eyes, anybody can sell at this point and that I just don't feel a massive connection with. It's not to say that if I don't find Carhartt on my way, I won't get it, but I won't go out of my way to get it. And the kind of, the culture behind the buying and selling for sellers in the, in the vintage industry is looking for the stock that you know that everybody's struggling to get and selling it at a price that gives you a nice profit. So is there a, is there a happiness within the buying aspect of stock or with like in vintage with other suppliers? Yeah, because I think that competition is healthy and that gives you happiness when you're successful with it. But obviously if you're not the successful one and you uh, are not able to compete with prices and stuff, then it might not be as happy for you. It makes people 
one thing that's big about the vintage community is because of what you deal with and you're dealing with buying stuff that you're making a business from, a lot of people want to know, if you've got cool stuff, they want to know where you're getting it from and why they can't get it. And that kind of creates a dissatisfaction with a lot of people within the industry. What I've experienced, a lot of people have negative connotations around the competition, you know? People will be like, oh, this seller seems to just get all this bait, palace and stuff like that, and I can't get any of that. Well, you're not him, so you shouldn't even think about why you can't do that. If, if you could, then you would, and because you haven't, you can't. And unless you can, then don't complain about it. But we, there's a lot of, like, I would say, dissatisfaction in the buying process. I know for a fact when I was amongst the thick of it, I worked for years building supplies in the States, building supplies in Europe, and building a real repertoire with those people. Kind of, if you've seen the video, I talk about scaling suppliers. That's what I did. And when I was in the real thick of buying and selling, I, was get, I got to the point where I was getting approached by lots of suppliers who had all these brands all the time, wherever it might be. Um, but the selling the brands and the competing with the sellers in vintage, is that a happy industry? I kind of feel like happy and healthy go into the same way because in order to be happy, it's got to be healthy as well. A big part of buying and selling in the vintage community was not healthy for a long time with the way that either people gate kept, which was pretty re fair enough because it's a business, but it created this gap of people that really wanted to get into an industry that they felt like loads of people just were keeping all the connections and plugs to themselves. But if you've built up a connection with a supplier, you'll know firsthand how valuable that is. Um, so, going away from the competition of things, I actually have another video all about that because in itself that's a massive concept. The next bit I want to talk about is about vintage being happy in terms of its, I guess, business affordability. People will, I, I used to get messages from people, genuinely, and it was back when I'd probably like, post photos on my own Instagram on, you know, when you used to post them on the stories and you'd be like, shoot day today, I'm shooting this. And people in the past, like messaged me a few times and they'd be like, you get paid to just take photos of clothes, that's so easy. And it's like, what? <laughs> uh, no, it's not at all. Um, and I can see how it might look like that from the outside to people, but everybody that does vintage and that does secondhand selling knows that when you're dealing with individual products that need their, that need all complete processes, you know, take this jacket I'm shooting on the floor right now, for example. It's had to have been found, sourced, put in a color order, color order, washed accordingly, checked for any faults, and it's still only being photographed by me before it gets uploaded by somebody on the internet and then waiting to be sold. And that's one item, that's one. And there's whole rails of them, you know. So the process of how you make money doing vintage, I would say, can feel like an uphill battle. If you're not somebody who likes tedious tasks, like doing lots of things like this, like taking photos of hundreds of items, or having products uploaded, or working on a one-by-one -one item basis, then chances are it's probably not for you. But I don't, I think a lot of the production in it has not been healthy for a while because there's a lot of work to make a little return. You have to work a lot to make a little, but if you work on volumes, this is why certain sellers, you'll see that, you know, certain sellers will have thousands and thousands of products. And the reason why is it's like the law of volume. The more items you have on a platform, the higher the chance of you selling an item, but also the bigger the return on an average. Um, I always like to use that as like the franchise process. Like I never realized how little coffee shops make, like Costas and things like that. But because of the franchise nature of it, Costa can make a little profit in one store, but if he's got like 35 stores within 10 miles, 
It's going to be overall doing pretty well. So is the process of selling vintage like healthy? I would say it really depends what sort of person you are. If you're a get rich quick person or if you're somebody that thinks uh, you don't need to do that much effort to make enough on it, I think you'll be mistaken because I'm sure the people won't mind me saying it, but there's not people out there that are buying Stussy for a pound a t-shirt and selling it for a hundred pounds. The work that's taken for them to find the connection for that, build a, build a repertoire up, get trust and loyalty, have that stock imported, test it out with their audience, manage all of the commission versus what it would cost them to sell it, monitor heat maps of who's bought it and how they found it, and understand then how to scale that up. That's a massive process. And that's just one brand. And that's a brand that is notoriously popular. Yet any Stussy seller or anybody who sells hype brands won't just be uploading. If you're a real seller, you won't just be uploading products to the internet and going, fingers crossed, you'll be putting in all your relevant understanding of Intel. So let me try and generalize this to a point. I think I've probably struggled to like connect with the question, which is, is vintage a happy industry? And I would say some of the big pros of it are that you get to look at cool items all day. You get to try and make a go at making a living out of fashion. And I know that fashion's a big part for most people. And it's kind of like any industry. Vintage, you've got people in this that do it for the fashion, people that do it for the business, people that do it for the sustainability, people do it for, and I'm sure they won't mind me saying it, a bit of an ego flex. You know, you'd be somewhat, you'd be a pretty popular guy at school if you uh, was known as the guy that had all these Ed Hardy and True Religion plugs and was selling high designer brands on the internet and making money. You wouldn't even have to make money. People just would find it cool that you're selling cool designer brands. So, you know, I think it's happy because a lot of people that get into this industry get into it for a, a variety of different reasons. I will say that the element that contrasts the happiness of it would be the healthiness of it. And if you're somebody that goes, yeah, okay, I just want to like get, I want to upload 500 products a week. I want to get to like having this. Just ask yourself the three questions before you run it which is, do I enjoy this process? Does this feel authentic to me? And does this give me the purpose that I actually want from it? For me, now, I've, I've done that and I wouldn't say that I would never ever go back to being a big company. Right now where I am in life, it does not appeal to me because I've been there and I don't think it was the healthiest version, healthiest version of me living. And I'm gonna get into lots more videos about that, so if you're somebody who does want to do that, hopefully I can give you a realistic perspective of the things that I would have done better or differently if I'd have scaled up again, which I believe if I'd have done certain things differently, I might not be here on YouTube now talking to you about is happiness derived from vintage selling, I might still be out there in the fields selling thousands and thousands of items and doing that. But I'm not, I'm here. And you know what? I'm happy being here. And I think that's the main thing. So I've, I've stayed in this industry. I've found happiness within it. But I've now got to the point where I want it to make sense for me. I want to have happiness doing this because uh, I know what it looks like to not be happy doing this. That's probably the biggest point. Um, so, you know, I feel like I've inadvertently not sold this. All I'm saying is, is happiness, is, is vintage clothing a happy industry? The answer, it depends what angle you're coming from. And it depends how you're running it in general. So, that'd be my take. That'd be my initial take. If you've got any points you want me to address more so, 
feel free to do so. I'll be still coming here with loads more different videos um, because you know me, every day a week, I'll be doing these. I'm enjoying the part of the community and I really believe the process of this. And I hope that you enjoy what you see. Big love, guys.